What's up Modiverse, Dr. Dave and the Professor here. Welcome to the Geek Lounge. What have we got for today's video, brother? Today we're going to be looking at the 1-6 scale Hot Toys Echo figure from the Bad Batch. So here we go then with the box. I think you said it's a shoebox design, right? Yeah, that's what the Hot Toys boxes are generally referred to as. It's the sort of size and then the, uh, the wraparound cigar band. Yeah. Yeah, and we have on here Echo with, what is it, TMS042. I think that's just the code for the figure, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then a few different designs of Echo, that one there on the cigar band itself. The main there one with a blaster and his, like, screwdriver type thing. I think there's a more specific name for it. And then we do have some other designs uh, on the sides one there. I kind of refer to that as his, uh, like, garlic press slash potato masher. <laughs> Uh, but whatever that is, we don't know. We'll see when we get into the box. And then it is, of course, just all the legal uh, jargon and information that you get on every Hot Toy on the back right with the Disney sticker and the Hot Toy sticker. But I guess let's get into this and see what's inside. And here's the art insert that's displayed as soon as you open the box. Yep, and again, another really nice image here of the Echo figure and Hunter joining him too and we'll actually be checking out that Hunter figure in next week's video so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And here we have the figure with the accessories. Yep yeah, and quite a lot of them I wasn't really expecting this many for Echo but yeah we'll take it all out the box so we can then get detailed looks at everything. All right, so we've got it all laid out. We are, of course, going to be taking closer looks at everything, but I guess let's maybe start with the base because it is the most, well, maybe it's the most boring. There's still this little design on it, right? Yeah, so I guess you can either obviously have the, the carded design or like a more blank kind of industrial-looking stand. Yeah. It's got the uh, normal kind of Star Wars logo on the base that most of these things have. Star Wars Echo there. And then, yeah, the, the kind of printed design is of that kind of... Hue? Is that the right word? The Bear Batch Hue of uh, like this reddish... Well, what did they call it in the Hot Toys video? Coral and Deep Vermilion? Or something yeah, like something that. like that. Which I thought was quite funny, but yeah, it's obviously Echo, and then it says the Bear Batch. So the figure comes with um, three additional hands to the one that comes on the figure by itself. You've got the one that can hold the DC-17 blaster, which is a little delicate to get in. Yeah, it was pretty difficult, right? Yeah. Then obviously some other gestures just for the standard left hand. I guess that's just a, a pointing gesture. Yeah, hey you. And then there's this hand, which I'm not entirely sure where this comes from because it's I, I don't really recall seeing it in the animated show anywhere. But obviously it's part of his uh his right hand and there's a an additional arm piece that that can attach to. Yeah, and speaking of that hand, I think it's an alternate to this, which is actually called the utility arm on the instructions. But like you said, they weren't in, like, none of these things that we're going to show off in just a second are in the anime. I even looked it up to make sure, because I was like, I don't remember seeing these, like, same as you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I came to, like, a Reddit page, and someone was going on about the, um, like, with Hot Toys, they don't do anything on, like, concepts, so expect to see these. Because I think it was announced, like, halfway through Season 1, like, this figure. And, uh, and then, yeah, the guy then put, like, a spoiler message after that saying, oh, I guess they're going to show up in Season 2 then like after it finished but what are we 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 haven't watched the latest episode today yet but um yeah i don't know if these are gonna show up but like i said this is called the utility arm and you actually have that bit there that uh that does extend if the professor can uh, kindly show us um yeah hand just pops out and then the extension rod is that the way to like say it i don't like again Guess these so. things don't exist um at least yet in the show and uh, yeah, he kind of then has this utility arm, as they call it, uh, like mega extended. I don't know if he's like lazing about on the couch and just wants to grab himself a drink. Kind of a go, go, gadget hand. Go, go, gadget hand. Yeah, that's right. He is pretty much the Inspector Gadget of the Star Wars universe. So next up, we have what's called the grasper arm in the instructions. This is like a articulated piece. Yeah, yeah. So those bits, if you want to show them off, they do actually move out again. They be a little bit. Yeah, I need to be a bit delicate, delicate for these things. Especially with your, like, track record of uh, breaking stuff. You never show it on camera, though. Mm. <laughs> you have snapped a few things in your time, let's, let's say that. Usually I'm quite quite delicate with stuff, but yeah, I haven't had the best of luck with certain statues. More, yeah, more statues, isn't it? Like, yeah. sideshow stuff. But even some stuff, like, like the Ahsoka statue came broken. Yeah, I mean, you know, I had that Darth Maul statue, yeah. which I thought was broken for True. years, and then it turned out the piece was magnetic. <laughs> But uh, 
yeah, so this is another, what, what did we say, grasp at arms? Yeah, so, so I guess, so has it got different, oh yeah, so it's different articulation on... Okay, even in like middle yeah, joints. And and the end is also... A, oh wow, so they go like... Yeah, so you there. can actually... Well, it's what you would expect from Hot Toys anyway. Though. Yeah, exactly, it's... Like the quality of the figure and... So it's obviously grasp, because it grasps, grasps things, that's actually hard for me to say. And uh, yeah, we have that little kind of rod again in there that acts as a like extension more sort of flimsy though but i guess it is more like a like grappling hook almost kind of right yeah i guess so yeah something that he can although yeah it kind of looks more like something that would grab something yeah. as opposed to hook onto something more like but... some kind of like like inspector gadget style thing again right? <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah, well, I, I do wonder if we are going to see these in the show though, because uh, some of them are quite cool, and I think there's some like real uh, like chance to have some like, cool sort of funny things with Echo. But um, yeah, whether we'll see them, who knows? And then we have the manipulator arm, which kind of has a lot of different um, attachments to it. I guess the equivalent of what you would have on a astrometric droid. That looks like a obviously a cutter and various other bits of tools. Yeah, uh, yeah, for lack of a better like... word, right? It's... Again, something not in the... Well, we're going to keep saying it, but none of these things have... Like, he's certainly not used any of them mm. in the show. Just I yet. mean, it's certainly an interesting design because it's like got this kind of gold and, and brown mm. look to it, which doesn't really match the rest of his outfit. So I don't really know where these have kind of come from. Yeah, yeah, like whether they were concepts. But like I said, Hot Toys typically mm. don't make stuff based on concept. That's why they take so long as well, because they are supposed to be like literal... Yeah. translations but yeah you know what i mean like like exact replicas almost to an extent so it's kind of front on look there looks like yeah. there's a couple of bits maybe for uh like a blowtorch yeah. or something to come out of the front maybe yeah true but uh but I, I still think they're cool pieces nonetheless mm. certainly to add to this figure who otherwise would probably be a little bit boring right and then the final arm piece we have is known as the jackhammer per the instructions or as i like to call it the garlic press slash potato masher it just kind of looks like that to me, but uh, yeah, Jackhammer, I guess, what, Jack open doors, break down walls. Yeah, I assume so. I mean, it's certainly an interesting piece. Yeah, again, like I've said it, I'll say it one more time, not in the show, some nice detail to it. And uh, yeah, something I think that could be interesting if we you know, do finally see it. And the last piece of equipment is the uh, backpack, which obviously has some, some very fine detail on it. I guess there's, there's a lot of probably in-universe pieces here that I unfortunately do not know off the top mm -hmm. of my head. But I love um, some of the like wear and tear though on it, right? The scratches. Yeah, the yeah, the actual wearing is. They've done it really well. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see some of that on the suit mm. uh, when we get to that in just a second. But this does also have two what, antenna. Yeah, type. antennas. I'd say that um, obviously just pop in into the little holes. And... Yeah, that's as easy as a shoe. Yeah, there's yeah. the top as well. If I can see which way they go. <laughs> some like red design there as well. I guess kind of going with the bad batch colors right and the um then on the back of that which you're obviously not going to see when you're attached to the figure but it is magnetic right and it's like some weird kind yeah of it's it's almost like a like a felt maybe yeah. it's supposed to protect the thing but yeah it obviously just kind of attaches i assume it's magnetic but it's if not it's it's like some kind of clever yeah like non velcro like type sticky solution type thing yeah but, uh, we, I mean, we have tried it already, so we'll show you guys that in just a second. And next up, we have one of two head molds. Well, technically, this is the only head mold because the other one is just the helmet. The helmet does not go over the head, but we'll show you guys that in a minute. The one thing I would say that in the light now, he does look quite pale, but I feel the skin tone is a bit more tanned and like he's much more pale than them, right? And yeah, because of what he, what, what he went through. Yeah, exactly. And I, I did read up like the Bad Batch because... The other thing we should say is this is not like the, um, the the kind of animation style, right? It's not that kind of blocky style we see in the Bad Batch in Clone Wars. It does look like they've more gone off a kind of moulding of like tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow Morrison, Morrison's face. face. So, who yeah. was obviously the original clone? Uh, exactly, yeah. And I did read candidate. something. I don't know if it was in the Bad Batch, uh, like the original like premiere, like the pilot. Um, or if it was even like from the Clone Wars episode, a lot of people said that they'd uh, they kind of made the clones like too white to an extent because mm. obviously, like you said, it's based off Django Fett, right? Yeah. Tamora Morrison, who you know he is like more tan. He's not like a pale individual, mm. right? So, but that, that's the my feeling here is he's just not pale enough. 
like compared to the show anyway but um it's still really cool how they've kind of captured you can kind of make out tomorrow morrison a little bit in there i feel and then he's got like whatever the cybernetics are around the head right yeah i guess these were the things that the uh confederacy what were they called separatists whatever they called themselves were um like implanted into him and were using his his brain to calculate the attacks and things yeah were they getting information out of him as well yeah essentially they were using him to combat to combat the clone attacks yeah. basically knowing what their moves were and such but then obviously he's got the uh the headpiece as well that kind of goes all the way around the back of the neck which kind of reminded me of a uh, um lando's yeah administrative assistant uh lobot lobot yeah yeah so i guess it's a uh, an in-universe type style thing. And then we have the figure itself in all its glory with that armor. I always feel it's like samurai-like, don't you think? These... Yeah, I definitely feel there was some some influences with, with that sort of stuff, especially where it's... Because it's not like it's it's full-on armor. Obviously, there's an under yeah. an undersuit, and obviously each piece is kind of... Yeah, you guys can kind of make that out there, like around the kind of crop jewel, like the uh, inner thigh and, and whatnot, and it's yeah, in the like, sort of... neck as well. Yeah, and below the... In between the arm, yeah. the pieces of armor, like a flight suit kind of thing. All right? Yeah, essentially, it's a, I guess it's the, the same thing that Star Wars has always had. Even yeah. with the stormtroopers, technically, True. it's still a. And then he has his. I, I think I looked at this up. It's called a scomp link. I think at least that's on like the Wikipedia page. Mm. It says for what did you call it? Like splicing, right? Yeah, yeah, splicing. I think is the in in universe term where they uh, in, use spikes to hack into to the computer pieces. Obviously, most astrometric droids have mm. them. Yeah, there's a lot of detailing on the belt as well. Yeah, all these different pouches. Yeah, and everything. things. It actually does have a have a holster for the blaster to um to yep. fit into, and then obviously various bits. You've got like the the com link on the wrist. Yeah, that's quite cool. And we mentioned already as well, like the wear and tear from the battles and things like that. They've mm. just done it like really well. And then the, this skull is that? Do they all have a skull, right? In various different places. Yes. Like, I yeah. Think. I mean, essentially the skull. I think the skull kind of makes up their uniform to some degree, yeah. doesn't it? Or their is that, insignia. Is that like Clone Force 99 or something? Yeah. Is that what it's to do with? And then, obviously, the helmet here, where they do all have, like, different styles of helmets as well, right? Yeah. And and obviously, it's got, like, the, the kind of 99 yeah. insignia on the top. And then the, the other interesting thing, like, because as I mentioned, this helmet is just, like, one uh, like one mould by itself. It isn't actually his, like, face, his head underneath this right so that back bit uh whatever it's called if you want to show us now it does actually pop out so you have to pop the helmet off first just like so and yeah if you just show us up the helmet quickly sounds a bit weird but um yeah as you can see nothing inside he has been beheaded but yeah just a helmet mold which i think is pretty cool because then if you want him to hold the helmet um yeah this this um, piece then yeah pops out because obviously that's the piece that's essentially around right, the head. Right, exactly, yeah. Yeah, when I first saw this, I was actually thinking, oh, that's a bit weird. And yeah, then, how, yeah, exactly, yeah. How is his... Uh, like, we saw on the, the like glam shot on the box. Mm, like, of him holding the helmet like this. Yeah. And I did wonder, is, is that actually going to be possible? And then realised, yeah, this is obviously a removable piece. So they've, yeah. they've done that really well. I, I think so, yeah. When I first saw the figure announced, I wondered how they were going to do the, the helmet, whether or not it was actually going to be able to go over the head. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. But it does beg the question, right? How does he actually put the helmet on, though? Well, on the, in the show, the the back piece actually comes out. Uh, does that out. come out as well? As he puts it on, it kind of uh, yeah, drops yeah, out. Yeah, I think he I do it, remember actually. Puts it in, and then it kind of yeah. slots back into his. To the rest it would have been. Of, I, I guess integrates into. His I don't piece. think it slots out, right? Does it? I don't no, believe so. Look, no, because like... otherwise they would have just made it so it could True. go on the head. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I, I think overall, like. It's a very cool figure um, with all the things you get for it. Maybe not everything is canon, or at least not yet. But um, as always, I think it's time that we uh, play around with this doll a little bit, set him up for some poses, and uh, yeah, enjoy with some music over the top.
And well guys, that is going to do it for today's video. So first of all, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with us here on the Geek Lounge. It is very much appreciated and we hope you did enjoy the video. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop some comments below. Do you guys enjoy the Bad Batch? And what do you think about the Echo Hot Toy? And as always, we have plenty more content on the way for you guys. We mentioned it earlier in next Wednesday's video, we're going to be checking out the Hunter Hot Toy. We would love to do more Bad Batch ones while Season 2 is on, but sadly these are the only two that are out at the moment, right? Yeah, that's right. I think the... Uh, crosshair yeah. figure is next but that's like quarter four this year or first yeah. quarter next year that may even get pushed back which is weird because like, these two are out now and then yeah yeah it's possible one of the others might be next but i could have yeah. sworn that's what i read but we'll see it'll be yeah. interesting to see if they they, they make any follow-ups with their changes of their that's the thing season two. stuff's it's... already changed in season two but uh and i Cross guess crosshair's figure is his bad batch uniform yeah. not what he Pretty much, he's wears, already had a couple of changes, I guess, yeah. already with the scarring as well. Yeah, I think about it, but uh, I'm looking forward to Wrecker, he's he's kind of my favorite, so we'll see anyway. But we have plenty more Star Wars content on the way for you guys. We're making an effort to do much more Star Wars content this year, I think. In terms of our like combined collections, mm. like Star Wars is without question the biggest brand, so uh, yeah, make sure you stay tuned. We are, of course, heading to Star Wars celebrations in April. Over yeah. Easter, I think. Yeah, over Easter. In London, so we can't wait for that. So like I said, tons of Star Wars content coming for you guys, so make sure you stay tuned. What is the easy way to stay tuned? It's very simple. Subscribe. Hit, click, smash that subscribe button, and enable those notifications so you don't miss out on any of that future content. Guys, thanks again for watching today's video, and we will see you on the next one. Peace out, nerds.